Hi there, this is Mike Scholl, and we're going to go over the basics for what to expect during class. Now, I've offered this class in a one day or up to a three day setting, and I've also done it in a three hour setting. Three hours is, is very lean, and one of the ways that we achieve that is through watching this video. So, this video will form the foundation for the objectives, what to expect during class. Then we'll jump into the lecture and sort of get a foundation for what is measurement system analysis so that prior to class you can start to form the understanding for what you're going to do, what it is that you're doing, and then you can draft some questions that we can go over during class. When we show up to class, we'll do a high level objectives, and then during the lecture piece, we'll just spend about 10 minutes or so answering questions that you may have. And that will get us to the straight on, hands on activities, working with the materials and the workshops. I'll get into a little bit of that here in a, little, uh, a little bit later on in the video. But first, here's the objective. So I want you guys to be able to learn how to improve outcomes by using measurement system analysis and lean methods. We'll be teaching measurement system analysis. We won't be teaching lean methods. So as you saw in the email message that went out, if you're unfamiliar with lean methods, that's okay. Don't worry too much about that. This class is great for beginners or experience, um, higher experience level practitioners. So, so just, just know that when we do get to the improve section, your team will be running you through the actual lean improvements and I'll be coming along to kind of help you guys along the way. Then the second objective is to do. So we're gonna be learning by doing in class. So that's kind of implied. But then I also want you to be able to take these templates and the tools learned to be able to go back to your organization and, and do them there. And when I say do them there, I mean work with your teams to come up with outcomes, not implement these upon people. Just remember when we get into this do, just remember that key pillar of continuous improvement and, and respect for people. And then I want you to come back, come back to the Colorado Lean Network and teach someone else how to do it or go to someone else in your organization and teach them. And you can do this by sort of drafting a storyline on a poster and bringing that to a Kaizen forum, or you can host your own Kaizen forum through the network where we come to your organization and kind of see how you've, you've implemented these tools. So this is key and we really want to get to that point. And there's a lot of opportunities that we have to, to help get, get you there. Here's what to expect during the day. It's actually, let me tell you, I am so excited for this activity. I, I just I just can't wait for, for the day to come up. And here's how the day will look. We will start off, instead of the lecture, this will be the question and answer, answer section. Might do a high level overview of some of the key points. Then we'll just jump into the materials that you're going to be using. And then the workshops themselves. So you'll do an MSA workshop to kind of gauge where you're at to form your baseline. Then we'll do an improvement workshop where you guys will kind of do a self-guided lead through how do we improve the process and then how do we form the standards around what we improved. And then we're gonna test them again. And we're gonna run through the MSA to see if your improvements actually worked. And we'll probably go through that two cycles. If there's time, we'll do a third. And at the end, what you will do in the last part of the course is develop a report out. So as a team, you'll have about five minutes a piece to show us your results and what you learned and, and how you got to the outcomes. And I think most importantly, what are you going to do with this material next? So that's what to expect during the day. It's, it's quite, a fun, uh, quite a lot of fun. I'll give you a hint. We are gonna be measuring M&Ms and we're gonna be relating M&Ms to your work. So whether you're working in call, um, customer service, or whether you're working audits, or maybe you're on the manufacturing line, we're gonna relate that to, to your work. All right, so let's jump straight into the lecture. This is the core of this video. 
And we're gonna kind of go through the Simon Sinek's layout of start with why, and then we'll work our way to how you're gonna do it, and then what it is that you're doing. And then we'll just jump over here to the right and look at specifically diving into what it is you're looking for, and then the types of data that we're gonna be working with. And that's it. We'll, we'll sign up at that point and then see you guys at the event. So why, why are we doing this? I think you, you can read these examples here and they're very great. I, I think the biggest thing that I often get is, why do I even wanna step back to measure my measurement system? That just doesn't sound very intuitive. Why would I wanna do that? And the biggest advice I say is, if you're struggling, you know, one, with trying to develop standards and, and consistent processes and you don't really know whether or not your processes are getting better, you can use measurement system analysis to be able to judge that by taking a sample set of your work and looking at it to be able to determine whether or not you're consistently producing your outputs. You can use this to gauge that and help you, help you get better. Another question I often get is, well, that's great, Mike, but I, you've got scenarios here that are that, that can be repeated over and over again, and the outputs are oftentimes the same. But what happens if I'm in a situation where I'm trying to improve my process and the outputs are not the same? So in this situation, you know, you might handle a certain call the same way to get to the same outcome, although I would argue that every call that comes in through a customer call center is unique, but you might argue that you could categorize them into buckets. You're looking at the gear cogs down here at the bottom, so this is like definitely you, you want every gear cog to come off your assembly line the same, but what if you're a painter and you're painting different pieces of artwork from one month to the next and you never paint the same thing over again? Or you're an artist of, of other, other um, categories such as making music, right? And an artist in class one time told me about this scenario that they used and they, they say, yeah, we're producing different products, but we don't sign our name to that product unless we've hit certain quality standards that we set. So we look at, and a few examples that they gave me is, they, they look at the color palette. Does the color, do the colors work together? Then they look at the brush strokes. Can you see them? What's the granularity of the brush strokes? Does the canvas have the texture that you want or the texture that you need to be able to have that, that picture, that painting portrait pop out? And I think most importantly, one of the things that was emphasized is, does the painting tell the story that you're trying to tell? Every painting might be different, but you can look at different categories to be able to tell whether you're hitting a certain quality standard. And you can, you can either rank that as yes or no, does this pass or fail, or you can get a little bit more granular and test whether or not you have a quality rating of say 95 out of 100, something to that nature. So MSA is a, is a great tool and it can be used anywhere from manufacturing all the way out to you know an artist painting a painting all right so now we get into sort of the the fundamentals of how and this is how you run a measurement system analysis so first you want to identify your performance criteria and if i were if we go back to the painter situation you want to be able to identify those buckets that you're going to measure. So the color palette, the brush strokes, the canvas texture, that's all performance criteria that you're going to be looking at. Then you want to validate your data system. So if you are gauging your performance criteria, how well are you gauging that from one painting to the next? Here's an example. So if I were to say my color palette on this painting is on a one to 10, it's a nine. It's really, really good. And on the next painting, if I were to say, well, I didn't like that scale, I'm gonna use a one to five scale. And this painting is a four. 
it's, it's also really good. We don't have a good data system. Our data is, is it needs to be, uh, our, our data needs to be um, corrected. Another example would be, what if I thought 10 was good and you thought 10 was bad? That's bad data and we probably need to, now you can still run that through an MSA and it's pretty interesting actually when you do that because what you get is a negative um, correlation, uh, meaning that what you, what you assessed was completely opposite to what somebody else assessed. And, you know, that can be actually kind of interesting to dig into because that's the extreme. You don't see that very often. And you, and so when you do see that, come back to your data systems. Did we enter in the data the same way? And then you want to identify how you're going to gauge it. So the painting, you might have some sort of uh, rubric. Maybe it's a, a five box worksheet where you have, you know, three different things that you gauge the color palette on and maybe three different things that you gauge the brush strokes on. If you're measuring fuel injectors, you might have a specific gauge that goes around the fuel injector. And then the method. So how are you actually going through the process for measuring? We'll go over that more specifically in the workshop. So don't worry too much about that right now. We'll jump into do, which basically is we'll select a certain subset of our work and pull it out and actually measure it. We'll determine what the standards are for that. And remember the standards are in the eye of the customer. So we always wanna make sure that whatever our standards that we set, they agree with what the customer wants. And then we'll just set up and run the MSA. After that, you'll come out the end of the first iteration with some data and we'll take a look at the data. We'll want to see if the appraisers or the, the operators, the inspectors, whatever you want to call them, are consistently inspecting products, the same standards within themselves. Am I able to inspect the same widget and, it, and I get the same number today as when I inspect it tomorrow? And then we want to know, are the standards working? Am I even following the standard? And we'll get into that here in just a minute with the, with the diagram. So I'll move on to the final stage, which is ACT. So you'll probably go through this iteration, this PDSA cycle a couple of times. And the first few times, you're, you're going to want to be focusing on what do you want to improve next? Find that specific thing that you want to improve next. And then you'll start planning, planning out that improvement and running through the MSA again until you get to a point where you're satisfied with your end result. And I should say your customer satisfied is satisfied with that result. And then you'll want to start working on standardization. And we won't get too much into standardization with the class. That's another class, but we will kind of head towards that direction at the end. And then what is it that we are looking for? I think I kind of touched on these a little bit in the previous slide, but we're basically want to know if, if I'm able to produce the same product with the same quality standards from one day to the next, and whether or not my team is able to repeat that process or reproduce that process rather within, uh, within the same standards. Are we following the right standards into those standards meet the customer's requirements? And we're going to identify whether there's training opportunities for specific operators. Let me tell you right now, before you show your team the data, if you have areas where you have an individual or individuals who look like they need training opportunities, you might want to take that up with them in a one-on-one, -on -one, showing their data all by itself, and then decide how you're going to display that with the team. So this is a very sensitive area right here. If we're looking at systems, though, as a whole, as a systematic function of our team, you want to improve the accuracy and the consistency of that and to develop better standards and procedures. This is probably the, the, the core slide of the class, and it is what we are looking for. And 
I will be printing these out for you all to have there at your desks, at your workspaces, to kind of use as a reference. But there's there's certain things that we're looking for. One is repeatability. And I sort of touched on this throughout the video, but if you look at these arrows as two operators work, they are able to repeat their process no problem, which means that they agree with themselves. When they go and look at something today, it looks the same tomorrow to them. The problem here is they don't have agreement between each other and they're not hitting the target. So if the target is what we're going for, neither group is within the specification. So we're getting a little bit better here. We have repeatability. The black arrows align with each other, the red arrows align with each other. And, and most importantly, we're all hitting the same place on the target, meaning we're all producing a very consistent quality standard of product coming out the end of the line. Whether it's maybe some sort of report that goes to your CEO, or whether it is customer satisfaction, or a fuel injector coming off the end of the line. The problem here, we're still not hitting what our customer wants us to be doing. Something else we look at is resolution. So are we looking at this? Are we able to detect small enough differences? The red bar would be, the answer that would be no. <laughs> we, we know we're somewhere, we just can't really discern where. Uh, the black arrow, I just love this. Um, I can't make it any smaller because it starts to disappear. Are we looking at our, our quality standards at a too fine of granularity? And, and this can happen. Are we wasting time that, that's not necessary to decide whether or not this product quality standard is good? Precision, I just love this. You don't see this a heck of a lot of time in, in um, um, when you get to this point in, in government work because usually this is probably the easiest thing to fix. You, you don't need a lot of data. You can, you can sort of just tell the products are just not precise. And you can tighten these up with simple standardization methods. In the manufacturing world, when you, when you see this, you're, you're probably looking at a machine that's out of black. You're, you're looking at a process where you know, uh, the machine's off balance or the product going into the machine is, is poor and, and it's causing a lot of irregularities coming out at the end. So how precise are we with, with our, our products? And this is what we want. We want accuracy. We have repeatability. We have reproducibility. Plus we're hitting the target. Now, if I haven't scared you away yet, and really I hope that this, this hasn't scared anybody away, it's a really fun course and you really don't need to know a whole lot about data. So I'm gonna tell you right now, if data is not your thing, just stay with it because the outcome of actually working with materials in class usually will make that connection for you. For those of you who are a little data savvy, I just wanted to bring this up so you know what you're working with. So during class, there's two different types of, of measurement system analysis that we can do. We can do one based on attribute data or which are count data. So one, two, three, four, how many defects did we have? Or it could be classifications. So if I've taken those, those calls that are coming through our call center and I'm I've elevated them to a certain area of the organization. Those are called classifications in our, our, our call log. So if I have like a, um, a C7, classification seven, maybe that goes to our IT department. But let's say the person didn't need IT help, what they really needed was help with finance. That would be a classification error. And then, of course, the most simple, which would be like the true, false, your binary, um, pass, fail. That's what we'll be using. Are these M&Ms that we're looking at good or bad? We'll measure those in ones and zeros. One is good, zero is bad. So class, 
classify them into two buckets. And then remember when we were talking about resolution, if we're not looking at a small enough resolution, we can bring in continuous or variable data. And basically this just kind of dials us in a little bit tighter. So with the call situation, the call scenario, you might look at classifications and think, well, I have five classifications that really didn't help me. What I, what I wanted to know was how quick was I able to get someone to the right classification? So then we'd start looking at timeliness data. How long did it take to get to X, um, to get to Y? Then we'll look at our, we can also look at quality score. So back to the painting scenario, like what was the quality rating of that painting? And then there's some other examples from healthcare industry, like the heart monitor, weight. You can measure, you know, down to the millimeter, um, centimeter, whatever you want to do on part specifications. Really anything that sort of has an infinite amount of measurement. This is important because the type of MSA that we run will be different. We will cover the attribute, which is a simple yes, no type of study. So we will be focused over here. I just wanted you guys to know that in the two day course or the three day course, if we offered that, we would jump into variable data and sort of get a little bit more in depth on, on what it is that we're looking at. That's it. So that's basically in a nutshell what to expect. I'm going to make these slides available for you guys to look at. If you want to read a little bit more, you can come in here to case studies. You can look at the references and that sort of thing. But really, that's all you really need to do. Just watch the video and come to class. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. And if you have any questions, drop me a line. Otherwise, write them down and bring them on into class. All right, see you soon.